Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Well FM's Fireside Chat with Artists, where we talk about everything and anything art and crypto in the NFT space, also known as non fungible tokens. I'm your host, Decryptolorian, also known as DC, and I'm very, very excited to have two extremely special guests with us artist Alexandro Pout Tasso and translator Pingo. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, DC. Oh, we're, uh, we're very, very excited to have you both here. Uh, just a little bit about Alessandro. He is an artist and illustrator hailing from Italy. Uh, he has done works seen in the New York Times, uh, Los Angeles Times, uh, on Adobe, and also on NBA TV. Uh, just, just a few, just a few, uh, if, if anyone's heard of those. <laughs> uh, so welcome, both of you, and uh, t tell us about yourself. Raccontaci qualcosa su di te, Alessandro. Okay, allora, come puoi anche vedere dopo la, la prima slide, tutto è iniziato tanti anni fa. Praticamente mio papà fa il serigrafo e quindi un giorno ha portato a casa un vecchio Macintosh LC475 e da lì è cominciato tutto. It all started a long time ago, um, uh, begin with um, using this Mac that was owned by his father and through this Mac it all started through Photoshop and through uh, modification of different images, okay. Oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. And uh, for those of you who are like me, uh, a little bit older uh, today, uh, this was our our computer. Uh, some of you may not recognize this as a computer, but uh, mm -hmm. and and that little disk there is what we actually installed the software on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, th this is how we we got our start. Uh, children of the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this was a dream computer, actually. Yes, this this was a very expensive dream computer, that's for sure. Uh, you know, uh, it had color. Uh, those of you who who don't uh, don't know, <laughs> but there used to be screens without color, uh, <laughs> and and uh, this was this was a huge thing. And and uh, I'm very excited to show uh, the pieces that have come out of this this journey of. Um, you know, being a being a kid and learning off of this machine uh, to what uh, what's coming next. Uh, so before we do look at those pieces, how, how many years um, ha have uh, has Alexandro been doing art? Da quanti anni si occupi di arte? Allora, facendo prima le parentesi, questo computer non mi è arrivato nuovo, ma mi è arrivato usato perché l'avevano smantellato dall'azienda dove lavorava mio papà, quindi so this prendevo, actually, diciamo, gli scarti. <laughs> this was actually a second-hand computer that was dismantled from the company where his father was working uh, with, so he inherited it, but it was not uh, brand new, let's say. So. <laughs> I okay. see. I see. Uh, interesting. I had a very similar story where I inherited mine as well, and uh, and yeah. So it, it's yeah. Okay, that, and that so gives you an idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really cool. Uh, so so, how many years do you think um, uh, for for just doing art from when you started on this machine to today? I mean, has it been uh, since you were ten, or you know, a, a little bit after that? Ah, allora, ho iniziato, eh, iniziato verso i 14-15 anni circa all'epoca, ma appunto non, non c'erano tutorial, non avevo internet e quindi utilizzavo per esercitarmi la cartella sample che aveva Photoshop, quindi diciamo 10 immagini in croce, diciamo così. So, he started when he was uh, about 14-15 years old. Uh, there was no internet, there were no tutorials, there was nothing teaching you or helping you uh, to understand uh, how to modify, how to work uh, or do anything. So he relied on the samples pictures inside of Photoshop, only 10 of them. And looking at them, he started to think uh, uh, what he could do with, the, with his machine. 
Wow. Okay. Uh, th that's that's so amazing because, uh, yeah, I do remember those days and I remember how hard it was uh, to use Photoshop <laughs> without yeah. any guidance. Uh, and now it's just like, it's so much easier uh, to pick up. But uh, let's take a look at some of the stuff that has come uh, with, <laughs> uh, with that many years of experience. So uh, we have some vector art here. Allora, sì, queste sono le primi, prime cose che facevamo, diciamo, nei primi anni, anni 2000, prima di approcciarmi di più con Photoshop, uh, usavo di più Illustrator e quindi avevo un altro, un altro stile, un po' più simile all'Art Nouveau, quindi tantissime curve e altre cose. Poi man mano ho cambiato stile con, con gli anni, ma questi erano, diciamo, i primi lavori anche commerciali che pubblicavo, all'epoca c'era DeviantArt, Flickr e altri. GFX Artist, tutti questi siti qua prima che arrivassero i vari Facebook, Instagram, BNs. Ok, first artworks uh, dated beginning of uh, the years uh, 2000. Uh, it was using actually Illustrator at that time, so the style was a bit different. Uh, these were the first uh, commercial uh, artworks uh, it, was, uh, it was doing. Wow. Yeah, I, I love vector graphics and I love Illustrator. I'm not very good at it, but uh, we can see that uh, it's definitely a, a different type of style. Now, who, who were you um, doing your commission pieces for back then? Uh, a quei tempi con chi collaboravi, per chi producevi questi... Ah, erano mh, una rivista con cui collaboravo con diverse marche di abbigliamento, infatti questi due artworks sono per delle marche di abbigliamento italiane dell'epoca, mentre quella prima era un cantante italiano che difficilmente in, negli Stati Uniti sanno chi è, ma è Tiziano Ferro, a, a cui avevo fatto dei artwork. Ok, so uh, it was uh, uh, working, collaborating with a, with a magazine, and this uh, particular picture was for a um, wearing apparel uh, brand, uh, while the previous one for, um, for an Italian singer who is very... Uh, questa? Per Ferro? Quella prima. Ok, Quella the prima. previous one for, uh, for a famous Italian uh, singer named uh, Tiziano Ferro. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, these, these came out really, really well. Uh, and in the, here's... So the next style is your abstract art and a lot of this stuff is just absolutely amazing and and uh now is this more of a fan art or did you actually make a lot of this ab abstract art for um for you know people doing commission work quindi questi qua li hai prodotti come fan art perché erano cose che ti piacevano o ti sono state commissionate No, no, questa è fan art. C'è stato un periodo da, dal periodo in cui usavo Illustrator, l'arte vettoriale, che mi sono dedicato alla fotografia. Avevo un po' abbandonato il, il disegno. E poi mi mancava tanto disegnare, allora ho cominciato di nuovo a, a, a disegnare con queste cose qua, perché sono un appassionato di cinema e quindi avevo cominciato a disegnare i, i ritratti dei uh, attori americani degli anni 50-60 quindi John Wayne, uh, Club Gable, uh, Cary Grant, uh, Beth Davis uh, e Mary Monroe. Ok, so this is mainly fan art. He said that after Illustrator he moved to photography for, uh, for some time. Then he felt the need to go back to, to graphic and he went to uh, Photoshop and he started doing these kind of things. And he, he used his passion for uh, uh, 50s uh, cinema stars like John Wayne and all the others we, we saw. Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, oh man, it's just, uh, I love the colors here. And this is more of a comment rather than a question, but I, I absolutely love the co colors and, and the scenes that uh, are captured here. Uh, definitely iconic stars that, uh, you know, were have been uh, ageless um, or timeless uh, and Wow, uh, de definitely the, uh, you could see that the style um, of what we're going to see next it ki is kind of being developed. Uh, and that's more of a, I guess, that leads us into our next question on um, the fan art pieces. So is this, you know, and, and a lot of people will recognize this uh, if, you, if you haven't, but, uh, you know, is, is that kind of the, 
the transition. We went from a few things to um, to Photoshop to photography to now. Um, what was the? I guess what was the timeline that that this next piece or this next set of pieces kind of uh, fell into after you know you started developing the style. Quindi una volta che hai iniziato a sviluppare questo tuo stile, eh, in che successione nel tempo sono venuti tutti questi che stiamo vedendo? Quindi quelli degli anni 50, la fanata degli anni 50? Al, sì, allora, la base la di, questo anni... tuo, di questo tuo stile sì, che poi si è esatto. voluto... Esatto, okay. la fanata degli anni 50 l'ho fatta dal 2011, 2012, 2013, più o meno quel periodo lì. E mi è servita poi come fan art a prendere poi dei contatti commerciali, perché le agenzie pubblicitarie usavano quell'immagine lì come reference, allora mi contattavano per fare dei lavori commerciali e allora avevo quella traccia lì. Mentre invece queste cose qua sono abbastanza più recenti, diciamo durante i periodi in cui non ho lavori commerciali, allora mi dedico alla fan art per disegnare quello che mi, che mi piace di più, piuttosto che quello che okay. dei clienti. Questi di che anni sono recenti? Eh, questo du- 2000, 2015 più o meno. Ok. So the first, we, the first panel we saw, the 50 uh, cinema stars, they, they were um, created around 2011-2012. Uh, these images were used as reference by different uh, agency who then commissioned some uh, specific work. Um, and uh, when he had some spare time, uh, he also went back to producing some uh, fan art uh, of character he liked. And uh, for example, Star Wars uh, uh, was born around 2015, so some six years ago, more or less. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I, it's... It's amazing because I, I love uh, I love all of these characters and uh, sì, wow. Mila Jovovic. Yes, yeah, she's fifth element. She, multipass. She's great. Yeah, multipass. That's right. Yeah, the fifth element. Uh, I actually saw that in theaters. <laughs> when, uh, Good old days. Those were the days. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, Kill Bill, right? Um, yes. Yeah, and yeah, Wallace. What, yes, and it, where do you get the ideas behind the? Um, there, there's all kinds of details here, like the lines and the triangles and the um, the splatters. What? Where do you get that? I mean, is it just the piece itself that kind of speaks to you uh, to to get that, or or uh, is there kind of a, a template in your mind that you follow? Ad esempio nel caso di questa immagine qua chiedeva tutte le forme che vediamo, i triangoli, le linee spezzate, linee dritte, è un qualcosa che tu guardi l'immagine e ti viene, e segui un percorso particolare eh, che ti permette poi di arrivare al tuo risultato finale, come nasce un'immagine qui? Allora il procedimento è andato graduale perché le prime immagini mm. hanno dei livelli più semplici dove c'è semplicemente l'astrattismo e le, le forme suddivise, poi man mano col tempo ho cominciato a inserire dei pattern, questi pattern vanno, è la parte proprio finale delle, dell'illustrazione che sono poi dei pennelli che uno va a, diciamo, a, a disegnare sopra il, eh, le immagini, ma è, è, diciamo che la parte del, del pattern è proprio l'ultimissima cosa che faccio dell'illustrazione. Ma come li scegli questi pattern? Hanno per ma te è, un senso eh, logico e il tuo gusto lo guardi? Ma è il mio gusto, vai, vai, uno cerca di andare di contrasto sui colori, quindi quando c'è un colore scuro vai sul giallo, sul magenta e via dicendo per far contrastare meglio. Ok, he explained that the first works were just... Um... Uh, based on ab- abstractism, um, then he started also adding patterns and the, the patterns he's using, uh, actually, uh, he said, this is the, the last step, the last uh, finishing, and um, he just uses his, uh, his own taste and he decides uh, specifically uh, just trying to create a contrast between the uh, the image and the, and the pattern. So you will have uh, uh, light colors on a, on a dark background and so on. Wow, that, it's, it's quite interesting and it's, it's actually really inspiring to me too. 
because uh, it's there's so much to see and there's so much to look at here uh, and and the, the the differences between the the circles and the stars and I I didn't I've never really thought about uh, these type of patterns in in this type of way so that it's it's really cool <laughs> yeah, great. I love it too oh man uh, yeah and and then uh, you know the idea of taking these iconic characters and then you know adding adding your style and, and patterns into them um, must feel like are, are you a are you a big fan of uh, stranger things and and uh, sì, di, di solito sì, io di eh, quello che disegno mi piace, di solito, quindi non, non vado a fare dei personaggi di cui non seguo i film, non, non seguo le serie, quindi tutto quello che, che, che disegno è perché l'ho fatto magari anche nel momento in cui guardavo una determinata serie che mi piaceva spesso, molto. So, so everything he creates, uh, he creates it based on his own uh, taste and, and tastes and his own uh, passion, so... Uh, while watching for example stranger thing he, he might decide to create uh, an artwork uh, based on this uh, and so on so he just works on what he really likes and what inspires him i lo i love that because uh, because if you work on stuff that you don't like you can i don't know sometimes you could get a there's people that are um really really good <laughs> but uh you know i think it's it's a lot more special if you work on the stuff that you actually like versus uh just coming up with uh or or doing something someone else wants you to do right yeah. uh so i i i definitely resonate with that for sure um i did want to spend some time talking about uh the editorial section because uh this next piece i think there is kind of a story behind this so uh, uh i thought it was kind of interesting so de definitely share it I, i think it's i think people will find it interesting <laughs> passando agli editorial diceva c'è una storia qui da raccontare quindi se la vuoi raccontare ah sì che diciamo che i lavori commerciali quelli editoriali magari per chi non è dell'ambiente hanno sempre un po degli, degli aneddoti perché uno vede le illustrazioni sui, sui quotidiani ma poi non sa quello che c'è dietro qua quindi in questo caso qua avevo proposto su una base di immagini che aveva dato la, la redazione giornalistica eh, due proposte di ritratto, poi sono andati a scegliere ovviamente la prima perché sulla seconda combinazione Russell Wilson per la stagione poi corrente si era rasato e aveva tenuto i capelli corti, quindi pubblicare quell'illustrazione con i capelli lunghi avrebbe subito rimandato il lettore alla Russell Wilson della mh, stagione precedente, quindi molte volte i gli atleti tendono a, a cambiare look di stagione in stagione, quindi bisogna essere sul pezzo e, e fare quello attuale del momento. Ok, so here the little backstage story of, uh, of um, a picture you might see in a newspaper and uh, you don't realize what's, uh, what's behind of it. So he said that um, he started this work and he received some pictures from, from, from the team of the player and uh, he started working on one of them, the one on the right side, uh, and then uh, he found out that uh, this player in the current season um, had shorter hair and he did not have a, a beard anymore, so he had to start from scratch on a, on a new image. Um, obviously, always keeping in mind that the time uh, uh, you need to to deliver the artwork is always very short so it's <laughs> it's been pretty complicated he said wow yeah i imagine so uh, what <laughs> when you found out that uh that his, his whole look had changed really i mean this is this is kind of how i look uh, except for the hair but uh i'll let my beard grow out for like three months and I'll have this crazy beard and then one day I just I decide to shave it all off. So how much time did did it take to um before they told you that this was a whole new look for him and, and you had to redo it? How much time did you have to actually finish it up? <laughs> Quindi quanto tempo avevi dedicato sulla prima immagine e dopo quanto tempo hai scoperto che aveva cambiato completamente e quanto ci hai messo alla fine a fare anche quella nuova? Ma le ho portate in parallelo, perché certe volte in, in, abbiamo pochissimo tempo sulle immagini editoriali, ma in certi casi, quando la news invece si sa, 
ai magari diversi giorni di tempo quindi ho queste due immagini qua le ho proprio portate in parallelo le ho fatte, le ho fatte poi diciamo scegliere non c'è stato uno eh, che ho dovuto rifarla e poi loro sono andati sulla prima semplicemente perché va quella più attuale per il look del giocatore ma quanto tempo richiede un lavoro? come ore genere? non me lo ricordo sinceramente comunque qualche decina di ore ti, eh, ci metti se vai piano se non hai troppa fretta quindi un giorno di lavoro, diciamo, due giorni. Sì, sì, due giorni. So, producing this kind of pieces takes uh, more or less um, uh, a couple days of work. He said more or less 10 hours if you, if you take your time. And he said in this, in this specific case, he was pretty lucky because um, he was working on two images uh, at the same time. So at the end, he did not really lose uh, too, much, uh, too much time. But uh, sometimes... Uh, Uh, if this happens and you did not work on two images, you have to start from scratch and dedicate more hours uh, for the same uh, work. And uh, if there's an article on the newspaper um, being printed shortly, uh, you really have to rush everything. Oh, man, I bet. Uh... <laughs> wow. Uh, so, so here's how it, uh, how it came out, right? Yes. Uh, Yeah, I copertina. imagine. Sì, sì, la doppia pagina interna sportiva. Yeah, this is the cover. Wow, that's that's fantastic. That is uh that, that came out really well. Uh probably a little bit stressful at the time, but yeah, I think I think you nailed it on this one. <laughs> yeah. Ottimo lavoro. So it looks yeah. like they they asked for kind of a, a series here, is that right? E questa era una serie in particolare? Eh? Sì, City. perché allora cioè, all'epoca, parliamo di 4-5 anni fa, i Seattle Seahawks erano andati, avevano superato il division, quindi sono andati a fare i playoff. Quindi prima della partita dei playoff usciva questo paginone nel Seattle Times dove illustrava gli articoli sportivi dedicati poi alla, alla partita che doveva, che doveva esserci. Quindi ho fatto le illustrazioni fino a quando non sono stati eliminati. Porca miseria. <laughs> ok, funny story also. Um, this uh, this uh, happened the, about four or five years ago. At that time the Seattle Seahawks uh, went to the playoffs um, and the newspaper, the Seattle Times, they used to do a weekly full page covering all the, all, all the matches and so on. And so they always add uh, every week uh, um, an artwork uh, made, made by himself, he said, and this lasted until obviously they were not uh, eliminated from the playoffs. <laughs> wow, that, that's cool. And, you know, the, the expressions that you capture here are, are very... Um, they're just they're just well like they're you just pick the right poses i think and and do they actually give you different poses for you to look at or do you uh, do you search them online to to see which one you want to pick from eh, co come funziona te ne mandano una di immagini e ti chiedono di modificare quella te ne mandano una selezione e tu scegli Uh, ma dipende, a volte uh, vengono selezionate le fotografie già direttamente dalla redazione del, del giornale e mi dicono di lavorare su una, certe volte invece mi danno una cartella con diverse foto e poi sono io che decido se fare un mashup di due o tre foto insieme o di selezionarne direttamente una. Ok, so it, it really depends on who commissioned the, the artwork, sometimes they send him uh, one picture Uh, sometimes they send him um, a set of pictures and uh, he has a freedom to choose one of them or do a, a mashup of uh, more than one. Wow, that's that's cool. I, that's uh, that was more of my own uh, my own curiosity uh, come into play and and you can see there there's quite quite the whole set of these uh, and yeah, each one is just uh, is fantastic. Su questa foto c'è un altro aneddoto, eh, praticamente che io avevo, i Seattle Seahawks stavano andando avanti, ma non si sapeva ancora quanto andassero avanti, io quindi questa illustrazione qua l'ho fatta 
ma poi alla fine non sono passati, hanno perso e quindi questa illustrazione qua il Seattle Times l'è tenuta nel cassetto ed è uscita un anno dopo per, per i playoff dell'anno successivo. <ride> So it was working without obviously knowing for uh, how long the Seattle Seahawks would have played in the in the playoffs. So he produced this image, uh, but unfortunately the Seattle Seahawks were uh, eliminated, and so the um, Seattle Times uh, put this uh, this picture uh, in a drawer and uh, took it out one year later when they started. Uh, the playoffs of the next uh, season actually <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool that's cool that they were able to reuse it again that's uh, yeah, good that's artwork awesome. uh, never expires i guess that's right it, it doesn't it doesn't that's uh, that's a great point sì, yeah. l'hanno, pub- l'hanno pubblicato perché poi sono andati a playoff, però molte volte la, la fortuna di un illustratore è anche che la squadra sportiva per cui stai facendo le illustrazioni vada, continui ad andare avanti ai playoff, altre cose, perché significa più disegni, invece se viene spazzata via subito tu non puoi più, ti, ti fermi lì e non ti danno più nulla. Yeah, so Alessandro was telling that sometimes the, the fortune of an illustrator uh, lies also in, the, in how good the team uh, is illustrating for. Uh, is uh, the, the better the team, the more uh, you can produce, uh, and uh, and the better it is, of course. So it was lucky enough uh, in these two years because the Seattle Seahawks had two excellent years. They they're a very good team, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, they've been they've been lucky a few years for sure. Uh, the teams that I like are never very that. Uh, never never that lucky <laughs> uh, I did want to it's funny because you know you were talking about teams and a lot of folks that uh, are listening to this uh, they uh, they love NBA top shots as well and one of the uh, the most iconic players on NBA top shots is uh, is this next fella uh, that we're gonna see and uh, there is a little bit of a story here I don't know if this slide um, Yeah, this slide tells us a little bit about it. Uh, so uh, you, you kind of had some some knowledge before uh, LeBron James actually was was headed to the Lakers. So they said, "Hey, we need we need uh, this next piece of art to actually uh, you know have a different jersey." So maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, how how you came up with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Qual è la storia, la curiosità dietro questa, questa immagine? Ma allora eh, che mi arriva una, una mail dal, dal Los Angeles Time dove avu, hanno avuto i rumors che LeBron James eh, possibilmente andava poi a firmare con i, i Lakers da, da dove era prima, dai Cleveland Cavaliers. Quindi ho, ho lavorato in, pr- prima ovviamente della firma ufficiale del giocatore perché non c'era ancora la certezza e quindi dovevo mo- produrre abbastanza velocemente questa illustrazione qua in uh, pochi giorni perché eh, non avevano in, uh, alla redazione non sapevano esattamente quando avrebbe firmato LeBron James con, uh, con i Lakers quindi ho detto falla più fretta fr- possibile perché t- potrebbe firmare da un, da un momento all'altro Yeah, so I received a mail from the LA Times uh, saying that there's a rumor that um, LBJ might move uh, to, to the Lakers Um, and we need to be we need to be ready so you have to prepare something uh, uh, real quick we don't know exactly when he's gonna sign uh, but please do something on a rush so he said uh, it was uh, pretty funny to prepare it and to work on it uh, and to see the final result yeah it it came out um, it came out really well and, and he is definitely one of the uh the most popular players now <laughs> that's for sure absolutely uh, now and now do um do you like football uh oh, american football and do you like uh, american basketball ma sì, io piace... seguo seguo calcio ovviamente per, essendo il, lo sport principale italiano e seguo il basket il football americano no anche perché è difficile vedere quale partite hanno, sono sempre tardi, l'NBA invece è coperto leggermente meglio come cose come, come highlight dal, dalle televisioni italiane. Sava anche che ci sono diversi italiani che giocano in NBA, anche se non con risultati super eccessi, però comunque in Italia l'NBA è seguita molto. So 
I said that obviously being Italian is a soccer fan. Uh, that comes with no surprise, I guess. Um, no, he, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, I guess. Um, he actually follows uh, NBA. He doesn't really follow um, um, the football. And um, he said that mainly because you can watch um, matches on, um, on TV in Italy pretty easily, while it's uh, more difficult uh, for, uh, for the football. So he, he, often follows, uh, he often follows the NBA. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I always get curious myself. So the, the, <laughs> these type of questions, I, uh, I, I just, uh, it, it's interesting because, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you've taken your style and you've put it to the, you know, you put it to the faces. And, and for me, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of, um, of football. I, I, uh, I know it and I, you know, in basketball either, uh, I, I actually am more a fan of, uh, of soccer, uh, for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, you're turning that style into your stylized art that just comes out and it's vibrant and it's, uh, has a lot of character. And I think it, I think it translates well. I think it translates really well. So I, 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 I think, uh, yeah, it, it makes me want to be a better sports fan, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Diceva che comunque vengono molto bene queste immagini e che, che insomma si combinano bene al tipo di sport e, e ti fanno appassionare ancora di più. Ecco. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, now I'd, I'd like to spend a little bit of time about talking about the different... Um, so tell us a little bit about these pieces, I guess, because uh, were these commissions or were these something that you did because you really like... Uh, the, you know, the artists or whatnot. Ok, parlateci di, questi, di questi, queste immagini. È un qualcosa che ti è stato commissionato o qualcosa sul quale hai lavorato per, per No, no, queste sono tutte, son tutte commissionate da anche questa, sempre Los Angeles Time. E, cioè va, se non ricordo male, va per i Grammy Awards di qualche anno fa. C'era cioè Kendrick Lamar e, e Jay-Z e poi ne avevo fatte altre per sempre i Grammy Awards quindi che chiamavano quindi c'era se non ricordo male proprio la, la premiazione a Los Angeles quindi era un, un argomento che veniva trattato localmente proprio dal, dal Los Angeles Time ok so these were commissioned as well by the LA Times and it was during the the, 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 the Grammy Awards and they needed some pictures uh, to be to be used during this, uh, this period. So he, he has, in this case, uh, Jay-Z and Kendrick Lamar and he had others as well. Okay, so we, we have this, um, this kind of, uh, these commission works with popular events, popular things going on, uh, you know, popular newspapers that are coming out. And, uh, and you, you really just, you're killing it with with these art pieces uh and and they really they really like the style right uh i i think i think that kind of uh speaks for itself in, in uh in the history of everything here um and and so it's you could see that it's just yeah i mean Okay, well, we, we're, I see. Okay, so we're getting into this, you know, this kind of a, a set uh, style and, and pieces that are, are commissioned by, uh, by these folks. This is great. Just want to take our audience. Sì, through, le... through diciamo che queste illustrazioni qua, molte volte i quotidiani tendono a commissionare agli artisti e illustratori quando ci sono degli eventi un po' particolari tipo appunto il Seattle Times commissionava quando c'erano i playoff della squadra locale quindi avevano dei budget extra per fare altrimenti avrebbero messo delle fotografie quindi allora quando c'è tanta tirature tendono allora a avere un extra budget allora di chiamare degli artisti o degli illustratori per fare le cose come anche Los Angeles Times c'erano la premiazione di Grammy Awards, c'erano gli All Star Game, allora chiamano gli illustratori, altrimenti userebbero le foto, le fotografie normali. 
So I was telling that when, uh, when a daily newspaper has big events, just like the playoffs or, or the Grammy Awards, um, then they have some extra budget and instead of using simple photography, they commission works to illustrators uh, just like uh, uh, they did with them, for example, uh, from Seattle uh, Times or, uh, or from the LA Times. So when they have enough time and when there's a big event, usually they, they try to involve some illustrator. Oh, that's great. Okay. So that, that kind of answers my question. I was, I was trying to formulate it a little bit to, to think about what I was trying to say, but okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so we, we've seen some art. Uh, we've seen uh, some of your, your commercial pieces, but I wanted to take our folks through a little bit something different. So you're on quite a lot of uh, platforms uh being foundation being one of them and how i guess to transition the conversation a bit how did you first find out about nfts and crypto art eh, ma per passare un po nel discorso su sugli nft e sulla crypto arte come hai iniziato come sei entrato in questo mondo allora la prima volta che li ho sentiti, non mi sono informato tanto bene, ma era già novembre, ma è stata una cosa un po' assurda perché mi sono arrivate un po' di, di mail da degli utenti dicendo che su una piattaforma di NFT eh, c'era un artista che, che metteva dentro le mie opere, vedeva la Rarible, ma eh, io sono abituato al fatto che, diciamo, tipo le immagini di Star Wars sono un po' ovunque, le, le, le prendono nei siti cinesi per stampe, altre cose, quindi sono un po' abituato, quindi non ho dato troppo peso a, alla cosa, lì era novembre, infatti vedevo questo, questi siti con dei valori strani, non avevo assolutamente capito che fossero della, della criptovaluta, nonostante io un po' ne, ne sapessi, ma non, avevo, non ci avevo dato troppo caso, quindi a novembre è stata la prima volta in cui ho sentito nominare, poi invece ci sono entrato a, verso, a marzo, ma l'avevo sentito a febbraio, come, per la prima volta. So I started... Um, uh, understanding something about NFT back in November when some user um, contacted him saying that uh, some of his uh, artwork were being sold on, uh, on Rarible. Um, he went, but he didn't really um, completely understand what, uh, what the NFT was or uh, what were the prices and so on. And he said that he was used to see his, uh, his artwork being used in uh, different places like uh, Uh, Chinese printing uh, t-shirts uh, uh, using uh, his uh, Star Wars images and so on. Um, then he said that in uh, between February and March he really uh, started getting his, uh, his feet uh, uh, right into, the, into the, the NFT and really started uh, pr producing them on foundation. Wow. So uh, if I have this right, so, you, you know, you're walking the street or uh, or you're, you're browsing Rarible and someone has taken your artwork and is trying to sell it on their own or there's a T-shirt somewhere with it. <laughs> is, is that what I understand? <laughs> Se hai capito bene, te capite di camminare per strada o di guardare internet o trovi una maglietta con una tua immagine o vedi una maglietta con la tua immagine, oppure ti capita di vedere qualcuno su Rarible che vende una tua immagine, qualcosa che tu hai prodotto. Sì, 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 sì capita spesso. <laughs> It happens often, he said. I wow. love this one. Wow, I love this one too. Uh, so, how does... Is it, is it a flattering thing to see it when you're walking down the street and see your art on, on a t-shirt, or... Is it like, wait a minute, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Ma cosa pensi quando vedi queste cose, questi, queste persone che usano le tue cose? È un qualcosa che ti fa piacere perché vedi che sono diventati popolari, è un qualcosa che ti fa arrabbiare? Arrabbiare non più, perché ci sono, diciamo, abituato, era, succedeva già eh, 15 anni fa, perché avevo, internet era diverso, non c'erano ancora i social network, e un mio amico abbastanza bravo mi aveva fatto lui il sito, ed era indicizzato benissimo, 
fatto sta che eh, cercando su Google Image qualsiasi vocabolo molte volte compavivano delle mie illustrazioni e me le trovavo ovunque, dai flyer delle discoteche agli accendini, a magliette. Quindi ormai ci ho preso il callo e ci sono, ci sono un po' abituato. <ride> He said at first he, he used to get angry, but it said that it's been such a long time since it all started that uh, it, it doesn't care much anymore. He said it all started about 15 years ago because uh, there were no social uh, networks and so on. So he had his own, uh, his own website created by a friend, uh, which was very well um, positioned, indexed in, uh, in Google. So he said that often when someone was, uh, was looking for a, for a word um, and looking for an image linked to a word, often his, uh, his pieces would, uh, would come up. And so he said that he found uh, lighters, uh, uh, discotheque flyers, uh, um, and pretty much everything, anything using his image. So he said at the end, he just doesn't care much anymore. Wow. Uh, el- e l'ultima è successa qualche settimana fa che un utente su Instagram mi ha fatto vedere la sua PlayStation 5 con la cover di Darth Vader, di cui io ovviamente non sapevo nulla, non so neanche dove l'abbia comprato. E <laughs> disse che the last one he just found out a, a few weeks ago is a, a user contacted him and sent him a picture of his brand new PS5 with a cover, uh, with a printing of the. Star Wars uh, character on it and he's not uh, at all aware of this. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about it. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll say that uh, when, you know, I, I guess it's, it is, for me, it's like the, the biggest compliment, uh, you know, that people actually want to take your work uh, and use it in different ways, which Uh, I, I would say it's a compliment because your work is fantastic. So uh, it, it, just, it just makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad this kind of led you into the, the crypto space. Had, had you uh, had any cryptocurrency or, or been investing in it before you, you learned about this? Or, or is this brand new to you? Quindi prima di entrare negli NFT conoscevi già qualcosa sulle criptovalute, su questo mondo, era tutto nuovo? Sì, no, conoscevo un po', eh, diciamo nel 2016-2017 quando c'è stata un po' la bolla delle ICO, mi avevo fatto diciamo, l'account su Coinbase, avevo comprato qualcosina, ma poi è subito mo- molata lì, non ho avuto la, la costanza di, di investire con Bitcoin, eh. Li avevo presi un po', un po' all'epoca così, ma non ci ho mai dato caso. Quindi qual- un, diciamo una piccola, piccola base eh, ce l'avevo e anche di fregature, perché avevo anche comprato dei Ripple che sono cavollati del 90% rispetto a quanto l'avevo comprati io. Li ho comprati proprio al picco totale, quindi non ne sapevo nulla. So I said that he, he started uh, with uh, cryptocurrencies actually uh, about four years ago during the uh, ICO craze. Um, he bought some bitcoins, he bought a f- few things and he said that he had uh, uh, the, the biggest troubles while buying uh, Ripple at the top and uh, found himself losing uh, 90% of its value after a short time. So he said that after a while he, he gave up on cryptocurrency until, uh, until a few months ago and until uh, the NFT today. Wow, wow. Okay. Yeah, uh the the ripple drop was quite uh <laughs> It was not the only one, I guess. <laughs> no, no. No, not at all. Um wow. So so you kind of had a uh, an idea about crypto and then uh and then the NFTs kind of inspired you to come back and uh Uh, the way I feel about it and the way most of our community feels about NFTs is, uh, you know, the, they, they mean something. They're valuable. Uh, do, do you kind of feel the same way about them or, or is it still kind of this weird technology that uh, you don't quite know how to feel about yet? Quindi in questo tuo percorso nelle criptovalute e poi l'arrivo degli NFT ti ha fatto ritornare in questo mondo e si diceva che in questa comunità ovviamente le persone credono che gli NFT abbiano un loro reale valore eh, tu trovi pensi anche tu che sia così pensi che sia 
altro che sia speculazione co- cosa ne pensi insomma di questo fenomeno no io diciamo che mh, avevo iniziato di nuovo con le criptovalute diciamo verso novembre quindi c'ero ritor- dopo la bolla delle ICO così c'ero di nuovo ritornato ma sf- sfortunatamente non avevo approfondito gli NFT altrimenti ci sarei entrato sicuramente sicuramente prima no, pen- io sono diciamo mi con- considero un collezionista quindi però di robe fisiche quindi in casa ho delle opere di James Jean o Bay quindi sarà poi un passo secondario dopo aver venduto qualcosa essere anch'io poi un collezionista di NFT perché una volta che ci entri dentro diciamo che sovvenzioni poi anche gli altri artisti però è qualcosa in cui credi anche immagino certo assolutamente sì Ok, so he said that um, he actually believes in the, in the potential of this, uh, this technology. He said that he, he is inside of him, he is a, a collectionist uh, of real uh, physical objects, but he said that um, uh, he surely feels like is um, also, in this sense, going to transition to become also a collectionist of, uh, of NFT uh, and that this is... Uh, something real that is gonna last and that has a uh, intrinsic value anyway yeah absolutely i i feel the same way i i like having the physical but i also uh i don't know since i since i started learning about nfts i i have quite the uh the diamond hands uh <laughs> on holding oh. on to them uh that's for sure i i just i can't part with them and that's uh that's hitting another level of um of collecting yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so it's so different but it's so interesting and uh, uh so uh, what's next i mean so you you're on foundation um you know you said you might have some uh, some secret projects brewing with uh, uh maybe some collaborations uh that might be coming up e quindi adesso che cosa, che cosa ti riserva il futuro? C'è qualche progetto segreto, qualche collaborazione alla quale stai lavorando? Allora, c'è un progetto proprio appena, appena partito, diciamo ieri, con Ekaisa e quindi stiamo procedendo ad una collaborazione su uno sui due dei, dei teschi con diciamo, il mio apporto un po' dei colori un po', un po astratti. Quindi questo è quello che adesso sta partendo, che... Ci vuole ancora un, un pochettino perché è proprio fresco fresco come, come notizia. Ok, so the, 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 the newborn project is something that started uh, yesterday and it's in collaboration with uh, Ekaiza and I guess that the people of the of Wales server uh, knows him well and uh, they're going to collaborate. Obviously the base will be the, the Ekaiza famous uh, skulls and he's going to add some of his... Uh, Uh, of his style and colors to them uh, it's gonna take some time because it really just started but it's something is uh, is really happy to be working on wow that that is going to be something uh that the skulls are extremely um popular in our space uh not just the well server so <laughs> i guess uh you've heard it here first folks that uh we we have a really great collaboration coming and uh it, You know, if you're a fan of, of uh, Akaitsa and also this art, you're, you're going to be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, now, I just kind of, I've, I'm browsing these pictures as we're talking, and is it just art all day? I mean, you have so many pictures uh, and, and so many pieces of work to show. Uh, when does it end? Do, do you ever take a break? <laughs> <laughs> Ma tu hai un'idea di quante ne hai prodotte? Ma sicuramente qualche centinaio. Nonostante io comunque non, al momento non sia un illustratore full time 100%, perché io comunque lavoro in un'agenzia pubblicitaria e faccio il grafico, web designer, art director, così. E poi nei, la sera e i weekend mi dedico alla, all'illustrazione. Quindi avrei potuto, avrei potuto produrre molto di più. Quindi gli ultimi anni mi sono un po' fermato perché avevo un po' troppi lavori da fare. Ma lavori ogni sera queste cose? O? Ah, in questo, questo periodo sì. Poi c'è stato un periodo 2020, abbastanza pausa, non ho fatto quasi nulla perché avevo, giocavo e basta. 
So he said that this is his, uh, this is not his um, full time job because he has a he has a he has a job with a he works for an agency. Um, he has produced a few hundreds. He doesn't know exactly how many. Um, lately, he's been working uh, more or less every every night when uh, when he gets back home. Uh, while, for example, last year in 2020, uh, he has produced almost nothing because he, he just um, dedicated his time to gaming. He said so. <laughs> I can I can understand that too. Uh, boy, we're. We're pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great. Uh, so, what? So you're working on a collaboration piece with the Kaitsa, and what type of pieces? I, I see here on Foundation, you're doing very poppy pieces. Um, what can we get a, a kind of a sneak peek of what you might release next? C'è qualcosa, allora, tutti questi pezzi che abbiamo visto, tutti questi, queste immagini che abbiamo visto, c'è un, un qualcosa che vuoi dire su eh, altro su cui sta lavorando e che potremo vedere presto? Ma parte, al momento no. Con sì, sono su quello di Ekaisa, poi mh, facilmente la prossima settimana inserirò di nuovo un ritratto pop, può darsi Audrey Hepburn, che a cui sono molto uh, affezionato come, come ritratto, però diciamo che adesso mi dedico alla collaborazione con Ekaisa. Ok, now he's uh, fully dedicated to the Ekaisa collabo, so he's, uh, he's 100% on it. Uh, I said that he might uh, drop uh, what is probably his best, uh, his favorite picture, which is Audrey Hepburn in uh, on Foundation, uh, probably next week. Ooh, that's that'd be really nice uh, for sure. That sounds awesome. Uh, and what are, what are your thoughts about uh, doing a kind of a hybrid approach? Because I, I know you, you said earlier that you really like the physical. Um, some folks have actually started to do like a like a hybrid where you get the NFT and you also do the physical as well. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Because I would love to have uh, this picture here, uh, but also hang that up and uh, as a physical too. <laughs> la domanda è ma cosa ne pensi di fare un qualcosa di ibrido? Quindi ibrido tra NFT e uh, reale Io diceva, mi piacerebbe ad esempio tantissimo avere sia questa immagine come NFT ma avere qualcosa che posso appendere a casa mia ci sta, ci sta per... allora io diciamo che infatti ai Kaiser che eh, mi aveva preso dei pezzi io ho detto dammi l'indirizzo che ti spedisco qualcosa di, eh, di fisico perché alla fine ce li ho le, le stampe quindi alla fine Diciamo che il collezionista, poi almeno lui ne aveva prese tante, ne aveva prese in pari tre o quattro, allora a lui diciamo che gli, gli spedisco. Poi può darsi che in futuro magari faccia qualcosa di ibrido, visto che molti lo stanno facendo, l'ho visto con uh, Signal Noise, che ha fatto con, con Origin il suo Toys fisico e ed NFT. Diciamo che è una giusta procedura sia per dare qualcosa di fisico al collezionista che magari vuole appendere solo a, anche a parete perché non tutti magari hanno quei monitor diciamo particolari su cui proiettare l'NFT So he said that it's, uh, it's something he's been thinking about because um, of course it's rewarding to, to own a, an NFT but it's also uh, rewarding to, to see the same uh, hanging on uh, on the on the wall of uh, your home so uh, it's something is uh, is probably gonna do uh, have the chance to own the nft and receive uh, the, the real uh, print oh that would be that would be very cool very cool uh yeah yeah so we're we're coming up on the hour uh, i did want to uh to ask so is is foundation the only place to see your work or to get nfts now do you have any other uh, places that you're on that you want to talk about e quindi per quanto riguarda gli nft foundation è l'unica piattaforma sulla quale ti trovi possono trovare la, la tua arte al momento ce ne sono altre di cui vuoi parlare 
No, al momento ho quella perché essendo mi svegliato tardi, essendo arrivato tardissimo, era l'unica parte Avaribo, Lord Open C, su cui diciamo un portale verticale su cui potevo andare a caricare le cose, perché le, molte quando mi, mi sono messo avevano o le application chiuse o comunque c'erano tanti tempi di attesa su cui, a cui avevo, qualcuno ha fatto la devo ancora fare l'application, però appunto si, si parla di mesi, quindi ho voluto iniziare subito da foundation avendo avuto l'invito, quindi potevo iniziare subito a conoscere un po' l'ambiente. E se è due to the fact that the, let's say, woke up later to the NFT uh, frenzy, he had the chance to, to start with the foundation through an invitation received uh, from, uh, from another artist, Um, meanwhile, it's pretty complicated right now to, to access all the other uh, main ones. Uh, so they have long uh, wait list. Uh, you might get there sooner or later, but uh, for the time being is, uh, is concentrated on, uh, on foundation. Okay, G good to know. All right. So, uh, so everybody uh, in the chat, Uh, we got a, quite a few listeners listening right now in Discord, but also, uh, you know, shout out to our Twitch and Twitter folks. Um, on screen, we have all the links to uh, Canada, <laughs> uh, yes. foundation, website, Instagram, Twitter, etc. So we'll be putting those in uh, the, uh, the chat on Twitter. Um, also, uh, we'll have our video up on YouTube soon, uh, so you can find those there. And definitely, if, if you'd like to, uh, to grab one of these amazing NFTs, please, please go look at the foundation site uh, because uh, new ones are dropping. There's a few still available at actually these, these are great prices, honestly. And, um, and you, you know, uh, there's a few that, uh, that you could grab if, If you're a Mulder fan or a Kanye fan, <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, I, I'm looking forward to more Star Wars pieces uh, now that I know where to get them. So I'll be I'll be <laughs> watching that. But yeah, uh, go, go give them a follow and, and definitely check it out. And and uh, remember to uh, watch for that piece with the Kaitsa because that that sounds like it's going to be amazing. That, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, any any final words that you want to leave us with? Um, something we didn't cover, or uh, just to tell people watching? Una uh, qualche commento finale, qualcosa vuoi aggiungere a tutto quello che è stato detto? Qualche curiosità, qualche qualsiasi cosa con la quale vuoi chiudere? Ma in, eh, nulla di, di così importante, diciamo che spero che le cose che ho, che ho fatto in questi anni siano, eh, siano piaciute e eh, qualche aneddoto diciamo, che ho raccontato della vita lavorativa di, diciamo, di un illustratore editoriale possono diciamo, capitare, ce n'erano anche altre da raccontare, però comunque spero che, che qualche aneddoto così sia, sia piaciuto. He said nothing in particular. He said uh, he hopes that uh, his uh, his illustration, his art, uh, um, is something people uh, who listen at uh, will have will have uh, will appreciate. Uh, there would be some other, uh, uh, little stories, but maybe another time. Uh, and anyway, for uh, for the, the small stories he told, uh, he hopes that he also. Uh, explained what uh, can be the life of, uh, of an illustrator. Yeah, I, I definitely get a sense of, um, of how it could be for sure. That's, uh, I, I think he definitely nailed that one uh, because uh, I, I know illustration is not uh, one of those things that are, is super easy to do. It takes a long time and it, uh, it is very challenging, but also um, working with Uh, newspapers and deadlines can also, uh, and changes, of course, can also be, uh, <laughs> can also be pretty challenging too. Yeah. <laughs> True. Wow. Uh, well, I, I, I think the art speaks for itself. Uh, we are, it was a pleasure to have uh, you both here. Uh, and thank you, um, Pingo, for reaching out and, uh, and putting this together and also translating. Uh, and thank you, Alessandro, for coming on. And Thanks. we're very, uh, we're very excited to have you. And I hope that uh, I hope that everyone had a good time. 
and I hope that uh, they follow your artwork. And again, uh, we'll put all the links in a very concise, easy place to find them. Uh, so please go and do all the follows and whatnots. And uh, yeah, good luck on your next piece with the Kaitsa. I'm very excited. Uh, hopefully we can get more info on that and maybe we'll have you both on uh, when it's finished to, uh, to kind of say uh, hi and see what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you thanks. so much, DC. Thanks to everyone who, who listened. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Bye. Uh, bye, everybody. <laughs> ciao. <Bye. laughs> ciao. Ciao, ciao.